What are you ladies and gentlemen locals here and in this video I'm going to be giving you a ton of new player tips to show you how to make Elden Ring easier. Before we get into talking about OP weapons and things like that, I want to talk about, in my opinion, the two most important things that you can do to make Elden Ring easier. Number one, exploration. If you find yourself up against a tough boss, instead of dying over and over again, try exploring the world, leveling up some more, finding some better gear, upgrading your weapons, and then go back and fight that boss when you're more prepared. And the second thing that you can do, when you're fighting difficult enemies like bosses, make sure you're paying attention to their attack patterns. Any Souls veteran will tell you to study the attack patterns of bosses and take advantage of openings. So for instance, if they do a combo of three or four attacks and then there's a slight pause right after those attacks, that's a good window to get in there and do some damage. But make sure you don't get greedy. If you're greedy and you go in for too many attacks, you will find that you will definitely get punished and probably you're going to end up dead. Now those are two of my best tips. Now let's get into talking about how you can make your character as powerful as possible. Let's start off with talking about the thing that most people would say is the actual easy mode in Elden Ring, and that is Spirit Summons. So very early on in the game, you're going to come across this church, and you need to make sure you return to this church when it's nighttime. When it's nighttime, there's going to be an NPC show up right here. You're going to talk to her, and she's going to give you the ability to summon spirits to fight for you. And she's even going to give you a spirit summons as well, which is very good early on in the game. Now let's get more in depth into spirit summons. First I'm going to talk about upgrading them, and then I'm going to show you where to get a very powerful early game spirit summons. At Stormhill Shack, you're going to meet a girl, and after you talk to her, she's going to move to the round table, and when you go there, she's going to be next to the fireplace. After talking to her at the round table, you're going to be able to go to the blacksmith and he's going to have a dialogue option about her. At this point you're going to have to go back and forth between her and the blacksmith until you've exhausted all of the dialogue. And then after you leave the round table and come back you'll find that she's in the same room as the blacksmith. And at this point she's going to be able to upgrade your spirit summons for you. And in order to upgrade your spirit summons you're either going to need ghost glove wart or you're going to need grave glove wart. Now I'm going to show you where to get a very powerful early game spirit summons. Now in order to get this guy, you're going to need to defeat a pretty powerful boss, at least for someone that's early on in their playthrough. So you're going to need a few levels before you're able to get this guy. Just fast travel back to the stranded graveyard and follow the path that I take here. It's a little tricky, but if you follow my path, you should be able to do it without any issue. You don't need to kill any enemies, and you can pretty much run straight to the boss. Now you can try to get this spirit summons whenever you want, but keep in mind that the spirit wolves that you have should be more than enough to help you with the first couple of main bosses. I'd recommend trying to get this spirit summons after you've killed a couple of bosses and have a nice few levels under your belt. Now let's talk about early game weapons and equipment. And then we're going to talk about powerful early game character builds. Now at the very start of the game, you're actually going to be able to pick characters that have some pretty good starting gear. The Vagabond has excellent armor, the Samurai has a very good weapon for dex bleed builds and a decent set of armor as well. And if you want to go magic, you can't go wrong with the Astrologer. He has a couple of excellent early game spells. Now very early on in the game, you're going to find yourself coming to the gate front ruins. And whenever I start a new playthrough, this is my first farming area. I find it great for getting those first few levels and for getting some very good equipment and upgrading stones. There are several good weapons that you can get here. There's a decent two-handed sword. One of my favorite early game weapons is the straight sword that you can get here. I love dual wielding these swords. The armor that drops from these guys is a pretty good early game armor. And on rare occasion, they even drop smithing stones for upgrading your weapons. This is also a place where you get a crucial item for being able to put ashes of war on your weapon. I usually hang out in this area farming for about 20 to 30 minutes in a new playthrough. And by the time I'm done, I have some very good equipment, some good upgrading stones, and usually around 7 or 8 levels. Now on the topic of smithing stones to upgrade your weapons, location very early on in the game 
where you can get quite a few smithing stones level one is at the Limgrave Tunnels. This is actually very close to the gate front ruins. You can run there in like less than a minute and it's not too difficult of an area but I would recommend two handing your weapon so you can kill the guys that are in there easier. I usually avoid fighting the boss that's in this area until later on in the game. Now that we have some good starting equipment and some smithing stones to upgrade our weapons, let's move on. Now if you're into magic and you want to get a very good early game staff, you're going to want to get the meteorite staff. It's a little complicated to get this staff, but at the end of this video I'll actually add a clip in to show you the route that I use to get this staff. It's pretty simple once you know the route, but it does take a little bit of time so I'm going to add it in at the end of the video. Now that we have some quality early game equipment, let's talk about some powerful early game builds. If you want to go with a strength build and wield a big ass weapon, I'd recommend that you choose the Vagabond for a good starting armor and very early on you can get the Lord Sworn Greatsword which is an excellent early game strength weapon. Also early on in the game you can get the Graft of Blade Greatsword from an early game boss and this is an amazing strength weapon that you can use for the entire playthrough. Now if you want to go with a Dex Bleed build you can actually just start as a samurai with decent armor and a katana you're laughing. Here I'm using the Ash of War Bloody Slash. This is great for bleed builds and can be paired with strength and dexterity builds as well. You'll be able to get this in a small fortress that's located here on the map. There's a somewhat tough enemy that you need to fight in here. You could call him maybe a mini boss but he's not really a boss. And after you defeat this guy you'll get the Bloody Slash. One of the best Ashes of War in the game. Now everyone knows that magic is another easy mode and if you want to have a very powerful early game magic build all you need to do is go with the astrologer and get the meteorite staff. And remember I'm going to show you exactly where to get this one at the end of the video. A place that you're going to want to go pretty early in the game is the third church of America. Now the churches are very important places that you're going to need to go to in this game because in them you find the tiers to upgrade your flask. But this church is a little more special than the other churches. At this church, you're also going to get the Wondrous Physic. Now right away, it's going to give you the ability to give yourself a little more health. So basically it's just an extra health potion. But the further you get into the game, it's going to be able to give you more and more unique perks. It's an extremely useful tool that should definitely not be overlooked. Now one of the first things that I said in this video is to make sure that you get out there and explore the world. This is a very crucial thing for making Elden Ring easier and early on in the game you're going to want to explore south. This is actually an area in the game that you can completely overlook. In this area you're going to find multiple churches so you can get extra tiers to make your flask more powerful. Way down south you're going to find Castle Morn and this is the location of the boss that has the grafted greatsword. One of the strongest strength weapons in the game. Now Castle Morn is a completely optional area and it is a little bit tough to get through but you can get some pretty good items here including smithing stones level 2 and several other very good items. Also down south you're going to find these mini dungeons called catacombs. Now you can find these all over the map not just down south but the ones down here will give you early game items that you'll need for upgrading your spirit summons. Now the last thing that I want to talk about a thing that can make your character a whole lot more powerful and in the process make the game quite a bit easier is farming runes. And I'm going to show you where to find the easiest early game rune farm and I'm also going to show you where to find an enemy that's easy to kill and gives you a ton of runes. Now directly behind the third church of America you're going to find a portal. All you need to do is follow the path that I show you here and you'll get to the easiest rune farm early on in the game. This is a very difficult area so you're going to want to avoid all of the enemies that are here. You can take a second to pick up the seed along your way. Make sure you get the grace point here next to the bridge. This is very important. You're going to go up over the hill next to the grace point. Keep following my path.
jump down the cliff on the other side. Run across this bridge if it's nighttime. There's going to be a black rider on this bridge that you just need to run past and just run to the site of grace on the other side. This room farm is very well known, super easy to do. All you need to do is run down the hill. When the giant ball spawns in behind you, you're gonna to run to the right and you're just gonna watch the ball roll off the hill. Now I'm gonna show you where to get nearly 80,000 runes very early in the game. We're just gonna fast travel back to the site of grace that we got a little while ago, the Ferrum Great Bridge. We're just gonna run straight across that bridge, straight past the dragon. And just keep following my path and ignore all of the enemies along the way. Now this is a one-time chunk of runes, but it's very good early on in the game. And this is the creature that we're gonna kill, the giant white dragon. And right up behind the dragon, you're going to see a small fortress. And in front of it is a site of grace that you're going to want to rest at. For this method, you're going to want a bleed weapon. So either the katana if you started as a samurai, or you're going to want to pick up one somewhere along the way. Or even if you have the ash of war, bloody slash, you can use that as well. It'll take a little while, but once you take him out, he's going to give you nearly 80,000 runes. And early on in the game, this is a very good amount of runes. You can see here that I went from level 24 to 36, so doing this early on is going to give you a very good boost. Now we're nearly at the end of the video, but as I promised, right now I'm going to show you how to get one of the most powerful staffs in the game, the Meteorite Staff. And right after this, I actually have a clip of my full fight of the first main boss, using a lot of the tips that I've showed you in this video. Also, this is a two-part video series, and at the end of this video, I'll give you a link to the second part. If you want to see a list of items that will make your character extremely powerful, you might want to check out this video. Now, as of right now, this is just going to be a two-part series. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. And let me know down in the comments if you would like to see other videos added to this series. There is a couple of other ideas that I've been thinking about. And if you guys have any ideas of your own, please let me know down in the comments. This is the first main story boss, and I'm going to be using a lot of the same tips and tricks that I've been giving you in this video, so that you guys can see just how effective they are against an early game boss. I'm going to be using the Wolf Spirit Summons. I'm also dual wielding weapons that have been enhanced with bleed. They both have the Ash of War bloody slash on them. And lastly, you'll see me using a bit of magic to showcase the early game spells as well.
I hope you all got some useful information out of this video. Thank you all for watching, and as always, stay where you're at, and I'll come where you too. Later, everyone.